there are 50,000 different rules and regs across different agencies, and that's up from 10,000 in 1970. The everyday person should really care about this. In 2025, regulation is going to become code. Regulation is one of the biggest costs to existing companies, banks and insurance companies and healthcare companies specifically, and a huge burden to new entrants coming in and to innovation. And I think in this country, we have a system where we efficiently add regulation, but we never take away regulation. And so this problem keeps getting worse. And finally, with the advent of AI, technology can help solve this problem. You mentioned the fact that we add regulation every year. Just how lofty are these regulations? If you look at just federal banking regulation, right now there are 50,000 different rules and regs across different agencies, and that's up from 10,000 in 1970. But if you just look at the chart, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And so this problem is going to get worse, not better. That's just federal. Every state is following exactly the same trend line. Has compliance always been this burdensome or like what's actually driving that increase? Here's how it's done today. Uh, you've got a large, you know, thousand page PDF of documentation. A software company will make a fairly brittle, brittle workflow tool. And then you will have to hire many people to work inside brittle workflow tool and figure out, you know, is this compliant or not compliant? So, for instance, uh, anti-money laundering. You work in a compliance monitoring tool. It sends up alerts if they think, you know, Stephanie is laundering money. And then somebody who works in that compliance department is going to have to do a bunch of research across a bunch of web sources and other different databases and write up a small report, yes, no. When that goes wrong, it goes really wrong. And most recently, big headline, TD Bank was fined mm. $3 billion for having a long backlog of these compliance alerts. If you actually break down what they were failing to monitor, tens of thousands of detection alerts, thousands of investigation cases, these are really big numbers. And to your point, the kind of things that are really hard for startups to manage, how does that impact the economics, whether it's the compliance officers they need to hire or just like dealing with these fines? How does this actually work out? So large banks right now, up to 15 percent of their staff is just in compliance. You want to know the fourth fastest growing job in the United States in the last 20 years? Compliance officers. Compliance. Surprise. I kind of <laughs> led, led the witness yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't hire enough people. They're completely underwater, right? I'm sure the compliance team at TD was working very hard. So we need a technology solution. So how is this going to happen? I believe that every white collar worker eventually is going to have a co-pilot and some of those roles will be replaced by agents. But right, we're talking regulation, so we're not just going to let LLMs out into the wild. We're going to use them to turbocharge very hardworking compliance people. And that's exactly where some companies are, are entering. So for instance, you would get an alert. We think so-and-so is money laundering. They can go do the web searches. They can check the databases. They can bring all of this information together. Mm -hmm. And now, instead of a compliance officer having to do hours of research, they can look at this report generated by their friendly compliance co-pilot it. Yes, no. That's a five minute task versus a several hour task. Why do you think LLMs in particular are uniquely suited for this? Because they're able to apply some form of judgment. Mm. And so let's take a very specific example near and dear to our hearts. Anytime we want to tweet something, we are a registered investment advisor. We have a great compliance team. We have to send our tweets over and they will tell us if we are compliant with the SEC marketing rule. Right. I imagine nobody listening has actually read that rule. It's 400 pages. <laughs> so our choices are you could have a software that creates an if, then, this, that sure. type decision tree, or you can have a LLM ingest that rule. And they'll be able to make those judgment calls based on what's in that document if my tweet is compliant or not. And then it could come back with specific modifications. And there's companies, for instance, Norm AI is one that's doing exactly that. It is mm. codifying specific regulation such that you can send it things and it'll come back and tell you the answer. Do you feel like from the types of products that you've seen that they are at the point where they can sufficiently interpret those gray areas that sometimes do exist in compliance? So LLM's hallucinating. And for my consumer colleagues, that's a feature. It yes. comes out with great, great creative, uh, fun and enhancing things in the world of compliance that is definitively a bug. Yes. Smart entrepreneurs are getting around this in two different ways. One, um, it's much more of a co-pilot versus a full angel and versus a full agent. Mm -hmm. And then they're able to test enough edge cases around that the, the likelihood of hallucination is very, very, very low based on how they fine-tune the model to that specific regulation. 
The other piece is a big part of compliance is being able to show that you've gone through all of the steps to be compliant. And so versus a black box coming back with, yes, we've onboarded this business in a specific way, it's going to show exactly all of the checks Mm -hmm. that you've done, all of the documents you've gotten, what you've pulled out of it. And so it's a very clear delineation of what's been done. But again, it saves the officer having to do all of that work. They can just check the box. That makes sense. And are you seeing these tools on the market? Give us some examples of what already exists. Notoriously, banks, insurance companies, even fintechs can be slow to sell into. Absolutely. I think there's a couple of things going on. One, this has become such a burdensome problem that buyers are very open-minded to new tools. Mm. And two, companies of all sizes have woken up and said that AI can make a significant difference to our business. And so the sales cycles are moving much, much more quickly. Um, and so they range from... Uh, thinking of co-pilots that go along with your compliance officers. I mentioned uh, a couple of examples there. The other thing that's happening is these older system of record tools, so take transaction monitoring, that are built pre-AI. They used to be seen as too risky to rip and replace. And now what we're seeing is the new Gen AI first tools are 10x better versus 2x better. So, for instance, Sardine is a company that's got a much more modern uh, transaction monitoring system, and they are seeing customers rip and replace Actimize that's been around for 20 years. And that's just not something that we would have seen five years ago, but it's because it's just that much better. I assume, as you said, many of these industries are a little slow to adopt technology. What stands out in terms of what may actually stop this adoption? It is moving a lot more quickly than I would have thought. Um, you know, I've been investing in and around sure. the space for the yeah. last for the last 10 years. And the momentum and even just the ACVs that some early companies are getting is is quite fast. I think the two things that come up with the blockers where the smart founders have gotten around are one, how do I prevent this from hallucinating? Mm-hmm. And I think the two ways are one, showing the work, and then two, proving that you have fine-tuned your models close enough to this regulation that that actually doesn't happen. And the backup plan is a human does actually resolve it. Um, But I think the most important can be wedging in at a pain point that is very acute with the right buyer. Mm -hmm. And personas that weren't sold into that often before have become very popular. Oh, like what? Chief compliance officers, like BSA officers. Like I imagine uh, all of these... uh, all of these potential buyers uh, are now all of a sudden getting a lot of interest from very uh, technical, technical solutions. That's great. And I mean, if we think maybe a little more long term about opportunity here, right, if, if we really are talking about these LLMs coming in and reshaping the compliance ecosystem and, and this idea that you say regulation becoming code, what does that enable? Or maybe you could actually kind of reframe that question to say, given the overhead that exists today, what are we unable to do because of all of that compliance? Yeah. So think of just a consumer's life in financial services and how much better some of these new entrants have made your life. So uh, trading now is free. Mm -hmm. I would argue that's in large part because Robinhood came along, made trading free, and put pressure on all the large brokerages. Yes. For a large portion of the uh, of the U.S. population, it was very difficult to get a free checking account. Chime came along, enabled that to be possible, and put pressure on the incumbents. And so it is good for everyone, for new entrants to be able to come into this space. Yeah. And one of the biggest barriers is just regulation. And so the easier that we can make it for smart people of all resources to be able to start new companies, it's going to be better for consumers. It's going to be better for businesses. And as we look to 2025, because this is your big idea for next year, what are you looking for in particular? Yeah, I love two categories. One are old systems of record that you can do just infinitely better, and especially ones that have an extreme economic impact. So I mentioned before small business lending. Many businesses get loans from the SBA. Mm -hmm. It takes on average 90 days. Why? Part of that is there's a thousand plus page documentation about how do you make this loan compliant, right? So what is that LOS and that process that's very much going to streamline that? And it is great for the economy for our small businesses to be able to get the credit that they need. So systems of record, point one. And then point two would be any area where a company needs to hire, you know, dozen plus people to do a task where those people would rather do something a little bit more strategic. That can be a very interesting wedge in for a co-pilot type, uh, co-pilot type opportunity. And then you can start expanding and doing my task from there. 
So as we look to these changes, it might be obvious for like a big bank like TD how this can improve their operations. But why should the everyday person care about this? The everyday person should really care about this. And there's three main reasons. One, it's a big barrier to new innovative companies coming into the space. And I've mentioned examples like Robinhood, like Chime, like others that really upend some of the business models of the of the larger banks and provide free trading, free checking, just better consumer services. Yep. And then it's a hidden cost to a business's or a consumer's everyday life. It is longer for a business to get a loan because there's a lot of regulation and it's very difficult to comply with it. It is more difficult to get a loan modification that you desperately need to be able to pay your mortgage because somebody needs to be trained in the thousand plus Mm -hmm. Fannie Mae mortgage servicing guide so that they're able to decide, can you get that loan mod and how will they do it? So improving regulation, making it code, making it easy to be compliant with will improve everyone's lives in the economy.